This is an emergency broadcast from the Cubecast Media Machine. The WCA has released a statement on sliding and Yi Heng Wang's 0.78 2x2 world record average. It's important that you read it, but I'm pretty sure most of you won't. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to go through it word for word today just to see what we're looking at. It's currently 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I opened my eyes and looked at my phone and was like, oh gosh, what's this? What's happening here? Something, something has occurred. So let's get into it, okay? All right, so here we are on the WCA forum. This post was made an hour ago by Carter Kukala from the WCA Regulations Committee. First of all, peace and love to Carter, who is in a horrible position, but someone's got to do it. Dear WCA community, after consultation with the WCA Board of Directors, the WCA Regulations Committee, the WRC, is modifying its approach to the use of video evidence when verifying results and their compliance with the regulations. Okay, pretty good so far. For those unaware of this approach, the WRC previously made a decision to only analyze videos at full speed to check for penalties as described here. So no frame counting. Full speed only. The idea behind this approach, I'm genuinely interested in this part, the idea behind this approach was to not penalize competitors who do not obviously get an advantage by accidentally breaking a regulation when such violations would not be seen by a judge in real time. Since implementing this approach, there have been instances in which infractions that are not clearly visible at full speed, but which are evidenced when using frame-by-frame -frame analysis provide unfair advantages to competitors. At the highest level, the advantages gained from these infractions become significant factors in the overall time of an attempt. Okay, we know this. That's great. To ensure that the WCA regulations can be fairly applied at the highest level of competitive speed cubing, the WRC will be changing practice to begin analyzing video footage frame by frame for compliance with the WCA regs. Okay, great. So far, what have they said? Their previous decision to view video only in real time has been now reversed so that we can make use of frame by frame analysis. It's too early for me to properly digest this, but I feel like that's what the community is looking for, right? Specifically in regard to sliding. Anyway, let's carry on. Attempts eligible for frame by frame video review must fall into one of the following categories. Attempts which are a regional record or a personal record in the top 50 results of the world rankings. Okay, so they're only doing frame by frame for fast stuff. Fair enough. They don't want to be looking at my solves in frame by frame. That's fair. Attempts that form part of a mean or average, which is a regional record or a personal record in the top 50 results of the world rankings. Okay, so singles in the top 50, one of the solves in a mean or average of the top 50. Um, attempts performed in a final round of a national championship, continental championship, or world championship. All right, that's pretty clear. Attempts with a disputed penalty or disqualification where frame-by-frame -frame analysis potentially demonstrates the validity of the attempt. Right, so sliding falls under that category, of course. Frame-by-frame -frame analysis may be used to verify that the time recorded by the timer accurately reflects the time elapsed during a solve. This is all sounding very familiar. Ensuring that the starting hand position is valid, familiar. Remove penalties from attempts where frame-by-frame -frame analysis analysis unambiguously demonstrates the validity of the attempt. All right, so penalties can be revoked due to um, this as well. That's great. Investigating potential cheating. Delegates should report any findings to the WCA Integrity Committee. Okay. Oh, here we go. Frame by frame analysis will not be used in all other cases, including but not limited to penalizing violations of A6C fully releasing the puzzle and A6D hands flat while stopping that cannot be seen at full speed. Frame by frame analysis will not be used to penalize violations of A6C fully releasing the puzzle and A6D hands flat while stopping. So we're accepting frame by frame analysis in solves that meet certain criteria, but not for certain regulations. Okay, sure. Ensuring that a blindfold is fully donned before moves are applied to the puzzle during blindfold events. Verifying that accidental turns and in inspection are within the bounds of Article 10. Altering a recorded time, except by the application or removal of a penalty or disqualification. I think I'm confused by that, specifically this one. It may well be that I'm 
just a bit sleepy. It's very early in the morning. Today, I just wanted to look at this. I'm going to have to kind of digest it before I can comment on it properly. Moving on. Video evidence may be sourced from the competitor, an audience member, or any other source. Given that factors such as the camera used, frame rate, resolution, and angle may change how an attempt is evaluated, penalties assessed through frame-by-frame -frame analysis will only be applied if the violation occurs with a strong degree of confidence. Resolution is resolution. Angles are angles. Frame rate's very simple to work out. You dump any video into Premiere Pro and it'll tell you the frame rate. Like, that's not hard. But I get it. That's a bit ambiguous. They're leaving it open. Results suspected of deliberately committing the violations outlined above without accompanying video evidence may be subject to action by the WCA Regs Committee and or the WCA Integrity Committee. Give me that one more time. Results suspected of deliberately committing the violations outlined above without accompanying video evidence may be subject to action by the WCA Regs Committee and or the WCA Integrity Committee. So if you're flagged for committing one of the things that frame by frame analysis is used for and you're in the top 50, you're going to be put in front of the Regs Committee or the WCA Integrity Committee, all right? The WRC will begin following this process immediately. So that's as of today, September the 28th. That's today, September the 28th, as far as the WCA are concerned. It's actually the 29th where I am. It's cool here in the future. So the WRC will begin following this process immediately and will only apply it to future attempts. Okay, okay, that's a big one. It is not retroactive. The process will additionally be encoded into the 2025 regulations update. Wow, okay. <laughs> Okay, so frame by frame analysis is going to be allowed in certain instances. So if you're top 50, you can't slide no more. And also the big one, this is not retrospective. It's from now into the future. So what that means is Yiheng's 0.782 by 2 record will stand because they're telling us a number of things here. One, they're telling us that if that happens again, it's illegal. However, they are telling us that this only applies to future solves. So that illegal solve, illegal world record is going to stand unless I've misunderstood something something. Okay, there's a really important comment here from Nick Silvestri, which is worth taking a look at too. A WCA board member, after discussing this situation with the WCA Regulations Committee, the WCA Board of Directors decided that Yi Heng Wang's 0.782 by 2 average could not conclusively be determined to be in violation of the WCA regulations using the procedure published in Incident Log 50. The procedure published in Incident Log 50 will be the previous guidelines and regs before this announcement was made, which required that all video footage must be reviewed only at full speed. Competitors are subject only to the WCA regulations policies and procedures which are in place at the time of the attempt and cannot be retroactively applied to previous attempts. Okay, so it is. It is standing. That's what they're saying. Gosh. The board is optimistic that this new procedure will enable a more fair and robust approach to evaluating attempts at the highest levels of competitive speed loop cubing. We will continue to evaluate and pursue ways to improve our procedures in the future. Dang, okay, wow. So that has actually happened. They've said we're frame counting now, but because the frame counting rule starts today, we cannot apply the frame counting rule to Yi Heng Wang's 0.78 2x2 world record average. <sighs> There are a lot of comments on this post and I would encourage you to go and take a look. I would also encourage you to be kind and respectful to the individuals involved in this really tough situation. Carter has been brave enough and Nick has been brave enough to put their names behind these decisions. Big decisions that I have a feeling people are not going to be super stoked about, especially the world's top 2x2 two two solvers. Let me just take a quick look at the 2x2 two two Discord, actually. Everyone will please panic. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, very quickly, before I have a chance to kind of digest and think about this, great that that guideline about real-time video is changing. I think we have access to frame-by-frame -frame analysis. We should use frame-by-frame -frame analysis. Solves happen real fast. Okay, so it's silly that we don't. I don't think I love that Yi Heng's record is still going to stand. Right now, what I'm feeling, having first just read this, I don't think I love that. But I'm going to think about it. I'll wait and see what people say about it. And yeah, that's it for now, everyone. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. Please do leave a like if you enjoy the video. And subscribe if you want to see more. I stream once a week and I release videos pretty much every day. Also, use code QCAST to save 5% at speedcubeshop.com, Cubing Life Academy, speedcube.nz, lastlayercubing.com. Have fun, solve cubes, and I'll catch you in the next one.